my alarm goes off at 6.30. Uh, and um, actually, usually I lie just a few minutes in bed and try to kind of focus my thoughts on something sort of positive, on a feeling of like connection and um, uh, try to get my mind in a peaceful place uh, for a few minutes. And then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> And I go and wake up my sons. And then, um, you know, my husband and I kind of go through uh, the chaos of getting two kids off to school. Um, And that just sort of takes every moment of time and mental energy until just for about um, an hour um, while they're doing all of that. And I'm not thinking about books or characters or anything. I'm just thinking about don't forget your lunch. Don't forget your keys. Don't forget your phone. Don't forget your card for the train you know um and then they complain because I tell them four times and they leave and my husband and I breathe a great sigh of relief most of the time though unfortunately not all of the time I wish it, it could be all the time but um I'll go upstairs and sort of meditate for about 20 minutes to try to kind of get a little bit of peace back and and a little calm back in my mind um and sort of clear out all the chaos of the morning um at which point the cat will begin pawing at the door and <laughs> sometimes works his way into the room and sits on my lap while we're meditating um, because we probably forgot to feed him. Um, and then um, finally, sort of finish that, uh, grab uh, whatever book I'm inspired by at the moment and my, my laptop and I'll go out to write. I became a writer because I always loved stories. I loved hearing stories, reading stories. And I think I always wanted to tell stories. Um, When I was, I think in second grade, I actually took a friend around uh, this sort of woodsy school area where I I was living then and would make up stories about like, well, that tree, you know, that, that mark on the tree is where a giant, you know, touched it and a thief was buried there. And I would tell her all these things. And then one day she came to school and she said, my mother says, everything you told me is a bunch of baloney. Um, and I realized that I needed to um, channel these stories <laughs> into um, into something uh, more fictional, obviously, um, or I'd become a liar. So, um, so I think it was always really drawn to stories. I would make up stories and tell her that they were dreams of mine. Um, so that's really how I started as a fiction writer, is, is writing dreams. Um, but I think for a lot of people, it's not really about why you become a writer. It's sort of like, can you become a writer? Um, because many, many people are drawn to tell stories and drawn to tell their stories. There's this question, can I really do this? You know, There's so many people writing and it's really hard. And for me, um, it's been a real a process because I started wanting to write trying to write in my early 20s um, and for you know two decades writing pretty seriously um, I wrote two novels that did not get published didn't sell Um, and in the meantime I was working on films and documentaries and having kids and doing other things of course but I think very much I felt like a failure like I wrote these books and no you know they may be almost sold but that doesn't really (laughs) mean anything and I really had to think deeply about what I was doing why I was doing it um, what I thought I could accomplish. And I realized, uh, first of all, that I was writing these books to try to impress people. I had very specific people in mind, too. Um, and that I was trying to prove that I could be a writer or impress people with my language, and also to kind of validate my um, existence as a human being. And sort of going through the failure of getting that second book published, I realized, you know what? My existence as a human being is not validated Um, by any success or lack of success from the book. Um, And trying to impress people is is, um, not going to get you very far. I suddenly started to have a sense of freedom um, because for all I knew, no one would ever publish my books. So I better say something that I wanted to say and that I thought would be useful in the world if I was going to do this. Um, And I might as well keep doing it because I want to do it. And I really started to think about my intention. And I really, um, when I came across these cases, I thought, well, these cases are fascinating to me, and I bet other people would be interested in them too. And I think I could make a story that would sort of also explore these cases and these issues, which is really important to me, and and which I think might be just useful for people. And so my intention for this book was not about impressing anybody, either individuals or, you know, sort of reviewers or any of that stuff. It was really about 
connecting with people um, and giving, you know, and telling the story that I thought maybe they'd want um, to read. Um, and maybe it would be useful for them to read. And so it was really very liberating and kind of a powerful process to, to be doing that because I, I it didn't, it wasn't so hard anymore to kind of promote the book because it wasn't like, oh, read this book because I wrote it. It was like, no, read this book because it might be interesting to you. You know, it might be, you know, entertaining for you, but it also might be kind of good to, to just take in this possibility and think about these questions for a while. It was just a very different experience to the unpublished, disappointing first two books. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's a large part of why this has been just such a positive experience for me. And so anyway, um, this book came out uh, in February of 2016, and I turned 50 in January of 2016. So it was real, um, you know, after all those years of work, it was like a real uh, present uh, to myself <laughs> and um, a real um, feeling of accomplishment to put this out in the world. I think the most memorable thing about um, being a writer out in the world um, with a book has really been um, the stories that people have told me um, and the interactions I've had with people, um, but particularly these extraordinary stories that people email me about and they tell me about. And I, I really like about a, hunt, about a fifth of the people that um, I meet and talk to or at a reading, um, will come up to me afterwards and just tell me something about something their kids said. One, you know, reader said that their son um, had always said that he had five children and fought in World War II. And he's stuck with that story. He's eight years old now. You know, and other people saying, oh, my daughter said when she was little, remember when we were in China and we used to take care of the babies, you know, and really just um, sometimes little fragments and sometimes just full on stories. Um, but um, there are just so many extraordinary stories out there, so many extraordinary moments um, that people have that um, kind of indicate that the world isn't the way we think it is <laughs> most of the time, that, that this material world is not the only world, the, the only thing that's there. Um, so that's been really kind of mind-boggling and amazing. And, and also just every connection with every reader to me has been really interesting and useful. And the way, you know, people have responded, people who've suffered losses um, who found the book helping them in some way or making them think differently in some way about this and comforting them. That's been very moving. So it's really the, the stories and thoughts and having conversations with people about the book, people whose minds are kind of opened in some way, which is sort of amazing and humbling to me that that is happening. And also people who are skeptical, um, who come to me and say, I'm really skeptical about reincarnation. And, you know, ultimately I'm a novelist and I sort of feel like that's fine. <laughs> you know, you can enjoy this book without believing in it. But they want to have a conversation and they want to sort of think about it and talk about it. And just being able to have that conversation about what happens when we die, which is, I don't know if there's a bigger question out there. Just an incredible experience and a wonderful one. So that's, um, it's been good.